Hello everybody and welcome back to the shop. Today's project, we're gonna make a copper rose. And we're gonna hand forge this copper rose out of some copper parts you may be able to find sitting around. I built several of them for family members and gifts for people. Everyone seems to really like it. I'm gonna show you how to do it. So let's get started. The thinner the copper, the better. Uh, we're gonna spend a little time forging out and put some texture in it today. All of it works, but the copper will work a little bit easier when it's thinner. These are all just different thicknesses of copper wire and some different pieces of copper sheet. First thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna draw out our copper petals. Now, the one thing I've learned from doing these is they do not have to be exact. When we hammer these out in a little while, we forge these, they're going to change shape. This is just a rough shape to get us in the ballpark. We need six of these, and each one of them is gonna increasingly get a little bit bigger, just like the petals of a real rose in real life. And then we need to do some petals and the sepal. For those of y'all that don't know, the sepal is the thing that's at the bottom of the rose bud that looks like kind of a star. So we've got the sepal, and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six petals for this rose. Now we need some leaves for the rose, and we'll try to cut the leaves out of what would normally be scrap material. So let's make them a little bigger than they need to be because we can always waste the material when we're done. So the next thing is just a pair of 10 snips. We're gonna 10 snip this bad boy out. And right here is where having the thinner copper comes in. Truthfully, this is copper that I already had. It's a little thicker than I would like for it to be. It's a little harder to cut. And again, I'm not following these cut lines exactly. It's totally okay. In nature, sometimes the oddities are what actually makes it beautiful. So, before we take these over to the belt sander, they're a little unflat. So let's just flatten them just a little bit. Nothing crazy. It's a little better. We're gonna anneal these and quench them. Uh, the purpose of this is just to soften the metal to make it better to work with. So I'm gonna put a torch holder up here on the workbench. All right, so here's our bucket of water. Just like that, it's annealed. It'll be soft now. The takeaway here is this is super, super soft now. So we're gonna start hammering these out and here's how this works. What we wanna do is we wanna, we wanna put a texture in here. If you look at this old piece of railroad rail, it's actually a mine car rail, it's small. It's got a lot of rust pitting in it. That rust pitting is gonna actually, when we hammer this, is gonna transfer a pattern into here and kind of give it some unique texture. But as you can see, it starts to change shape from that boxy to here and we'll just keep working this. This is now hard. It doesn't want to bend anymore. Can you see that? It doesn't bend opposed to this right here where we can just bend it super easy. This is already work hardened, so we're gonna have to anneal it again. All right, let's throw in some artsy fartsy artsy worky here. So we got a soft piece of material here and this is what we're gonna use to work in some of our design work here. I've got a coal chisel. The name of the game here is control of what you're doing. I'm going for the baby hammer. We don't need a Goliath hammer, baby hammer here. And we're just gonna put the vein right down the center of this leaf. So if you can imagine this being a leaf off a rose, I'm just gonna keep working this. So now that has a stem in it, and then we'll put the individual veins in there. Don't want them to be too obvious, hence the baby hammer. And we're doing it into a semi-soft material so that we actually do leave an impression in the copper. This will be a little more obvious here in a minute when we take a brush and brush off a lot of the, the scale and stuff. All right, so now it's time, let's sort these all out biggest to smallest, which ones we're going to use. And the two outside ones, we're going to put some little bit of texture in them because of the outside petals on the rose, you'll be able to see a little bit of texture in it. 
the other ones are so tight to the inside you really can't see a lot except what's right on the edge which we've kind of already done that let's give these sepals some veins let's make it look better I see some guys that make these and they choose not to for whatever reason whether it's lack of their artistic ability their lack of understanding it or in their mind's eye that's not the way they want to make it which is all of those are acceptable to me you know that that little bit of extra detail goes a long way I happen to like it personally all right to the wire wheel and I'll wire wheel these real quick and bring them back next order of business we need to put a hole in the center of all these for the stem the stem is the number four copper but it measures out about 200 so two tenths and I selected a drill bit that measures 205 so we got a little wiggle room there we don't want a lot of slop we definitely want it to be tight all these have holes drilled in them they're all the same size we'll start stacking these up here in a little bit what we need to do is we need these to be soft again so we're going to anneal them one more time just by that small amount of work that we've done to them, we've hardened these because we're going to bend these a lot so if you see the pedals are going to go on there they need something to stop against so we're going to put a little bead of silver solder on here to hold them there because we're going to peen this over and when we peen it over we don't want these to move around once we get everything set in place take a wire brush and we'll just clean the oxidation off it and if you can see there we wind up with a nice little round bead goes without saying the sepal is going to go on first and then we have to pick by size the order that we want these to go in. It doesn't matter how we load them on there, but we put some texturing in this. And when this pedal is opened up, we want to see the texturing on the outside. So we'll put the texturing facing down. So we want these pedals to be 90 degrees to each other all the way till we get to the very top pedal. These can be just a little cocked. They don't have to be exactly 90 degrees, but we want them pretty doggone close. I got the machinist vice Sarah right here and we're just going to take our little set of flower petals that we left a bit of material sticking up you can use a grinder to cut this I might just happen to have a pair of bolt cutters right here in the shop handy so now that we've got this down nice and tight we just want to take the hammer and paint this over make sure everything is close to 90 degrees to each other and I take a punch and I stake this So we're going to start this by bending these rose petals up because the first rose petals should be really tight all the way up. So we're going to bend them up nice and high on each side. Now they should have a natural curve to the inside and you start rolling this rose petal in. None of these need to be done where they're creased. It should all be nice gentle curves and rolls. So then I'm going to take the top of the pedal and you want to turn it out. Do not try to be symmetrical here, or at least that's my advice. You just grab the next pedal down and you do the same thing. And I always find the two hardest ones to get the shape I like are the very first one and the very last one. All right, so we've got the rows. Now we need to do something with the sepals here. And if you've ever given a rose to a lady, you realize these always curl underneath. Now what we need to do is attach those leaves that we made. What I have for that is a piece of number 14 electrical wire. This is nothing fancy here at all. And we're just going to silver solder it here. Big warning bells. I might be speaking from experience here. Be careful. You can melt a hole in this leaf really easily because it's very thin. I think all we have yet left to do is just a little tuning on on how I want this to look for presentation each and every one of these things that I make every one of them comes out different it's a lot of hard work but as a gift for somebody it shows you've got a lot of sacrifice you put a lot of time into it and a lot of forethought making these for somebody I hope you guys have a takeaway please if you watch to the end of this video be sure to go down below leave me a comment give me a thumbs up but most of all, tell me your experience. If you've made one of these before, tell me about it. Everybody, thanks for watching.
and we'll see you real soon.